Good evening, live from the news center of the South and Atofa Man Television. Here we present to you the 7 o'clock news bulletin. First, the headlines. Palestinian authorities condemns Israel's plans to build 1,000 new settlements units in West Bank and calls international community to intervene. United Nations human rights investigators warns of ethnic cleansing in central Congo documenting the recent killings of more than 250 people. And Dukum Refinery and Petrochemical Industries announces tender for works related to refinery complex and spatial services. Good evening once again and thank you for joining us. Those were the headlines and now the news in detail. Assigned by His Majesty Sultan Qaboos, His Highness Said Haytham bin Tariq Al Said leaves the country tomorrow to Iran to present the Sultanate at the inauguration ceremony of His Excellency Dr. Hassan Rouhani as President of Iran for a second presidential term which will be held tomorrow Saturday in the Iranian capital of Tehran. His Highness Said Haytham bin Tariq Al Said will be accompanied by an official delegation of His Excellency Yusuf bin Alawi bin Abdullah, Minister Responsible for Foreign Affairs, His Excellency Dr. Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Futaisi, Minister of Transport and Communications, and His Excellency Saud bin Ahmed Al Barwani, Sultan's Ambassador accredited to Iran. The Palestinian Authority condemned laying foundations of more than 1,000 new settlements units in the West Bank by the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. It added that settlements are basically illegal and that the Israeli government should stop immediately its approach to destroy the two-state solution. The Palestinian Authority called up on the American administration to intervene instantly to stop Netanyahu's attempts to undermine efforts being exerted by the U.S. President Donald Trump to solve the conflict. These efforts were welcomed by the Palestinian side and expressed its readiness for its success. The spokesman for the Palestinian presidency, Nabil Abu Rudena, accused the Israeli government of provocations and called for immediate international intervention. Thousands of Hezbollah supporters gathered early today to welcome five uh, Hezbollah fighters released in a prisoner swap deal with, with Syria's Al-Qaeda linked to Nusra Front. The fighters were captured in central and northern Syria in 2015. The freed captives were carried on the shoulders of Hezbollah supporters as they arrived in the village of al qa in northeast Lebanon. The swipe is part of the agreement to struck this week to provide Al-Qaeda linked militants with safe passage of out of Lebanon. Some 6,000 Syrians elected to leave Lebanon with the fighters. It followed two weeks of battles between Hezbollah and the Syrian government on the one side and the Al-Qaeda linked militants on the other side along the frontier between Lebanon and Syria. United Nations human rights investigators warned today of ethnic cleansings in central Congo, documenting the recent killings of more than 250 people, including 62 children, in violence with no good guys and bad guys. The investigators uh, based their new report on interviews in June of 96 people who fled Congo's uh, Kasai provinces into neighboring Angola over the three previous months. It decried alleged violence involving a recently formed militia, Banamura, backed by Congolese security officials. The report provides a snapshot of the violence that erupted in the once calm region a year ago. The United Nations has estimated the existence of 80 mass graves there. At least 1.3 million people have been internally displaced and at least 40,000 have fled to Angola. United Nations Human Rights Chief Zaid Rad Al Hussein urged Congo's government to act now to prevent such violence from tipping into the wider ethnic cleansing. Beijing is intensifying its warnings to India's troops to get out of a contested region high in the Himalayas where China, India and Bhutan meet, saying China's restraint has its limits. 
and publicizing live fire exercises by the army in Tibet. Indian troops uh, entered the area in the Doklam uh, Plateau in June after New Delhi's ally Bhutan complained a Chinese military construction party was building a road inside Bhutan's territory. Beijing said uh, Doklam is located in Tibet and that the border dispute between China and Bhutan has nothing to do with India. It has demanded that India troops withdraw unilaterally before any talks can be held on the matter. Pakistan today swore in its new cabinet following a week of turmoil that included the election of a new prime minister after the resignation of his predecessor who was dismissed from office by the country's Supreme Court for concealing family assets. The portfolios of the ministers are to be announced later but some of the known changes in the new 43-member cabinet include that Pakistan will get its first full-time foreign minister since the Pakistani or Pakistan Muslim League party came into power in 2013. Thrice elected former Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif's government had no foreign ministers, uh, though the job was often handled by one of Sharif's advisers, Sarjad Aziz. Pakistani President Ma'amun Hussein administers the oath of the office to the cabinet members at the ceremony attended by the diplomats, uh, bureaucrats and senior military officials. Back here in the Sultan Al Dukum Refinery and Petrochemical Industries announced awarding tender for engineering and construction works and purchases for establishing refinery and special services complex in Dukum. The project of Dukum Refinery and Petrochemical Industries project in included three phases where the first bundle included main treatment units of the refinery, the second phase included supporting facilities and services for the operation processes of the refinery and the third phase included establishments of storages and exporting liquid petroleum products in addition to establishments of crude oil storage of the refinery in Ras Merkaz and crude oil transfer pipe with 80 kilometers long from Ras El Merkaz in Dukum refinery. Oman oil declined today 51 cents to reach 50.43 US dollars in October delivery per barrel according to Dubai Mercantile Market. It's worth mentioning that the average of Oman oil August delivery reached 46.52 US dollars per barrel. Seeking to uplift awareness and knowledge level in the society, the Minister of Health represented in nursing department at the Masara Hospital organized an orientation event about psychology health. The program of the event included various activities targeted different segments in the society in addition to an exhibition included a number of works by patients and coroner to experience symptoms that psychiatric patients in addition to psychological counseling coroner. You're watching the Sultanate of Oman television and still to come in our news bulletin. Owners of camels in the wilayas of Rakhiyut started initiative to preserve green fields and road safety in Kharif season. تبعث فينا المسير مهللة البشرة بمبسم الطفل وأصالة الإنسان لتختلط بادية الرمال بالواحات الغناء نحو نسمات بحر وشلالات عين ماء بين الجبل والسهل تزهر البسمات يطيب لها الزائر وتستمتع بها العائلة من رسوخ العادات قمم شامخة يجتمع عبق اللبان وطيب الكرم مهرجان صلالة سياحية 2017 من 30 من يونيو إلى 31 من أغسطس 2017 عمان الرخاء والنماء
Welcome back uh, to the news from the South and Tofuman Television. Strengthening communication between the family and the society and involving youths in serving their community were aims sought by the Social Work Week in the Governorate of Al -Burimi. The week also came to establish partnership among all the society's establishments to promote voluntary work in various fields. The activities included awareness uh, programs on some social issues such as drug addiction, electronic uh, blackmailing and charitable exhibitions. And now all the way to the North Sharqiyah. In the Governorate of North Sharqiyah, the fourth Social Work Week for 2017 focused on the role of Omani Sebla and ways to activate it as to instill on the young generation the Omani values and traditions. The week also sought to enhance the community partnership among all segments of the society. The week's activities included awareness lectures and handicraft industries exhibitions. The owners of camels in the Wilaya of Rakhiut decided to take their camels to an area away from the main road connecting their Wilaya with the Wilaya of Solala during Kharif season. This initiative came to achieve road safety for visitors of the Governorate of the Far during Kharif season. It also aimed to protect the environment from organizing the camel owners are keeping their camels in special pens for around three months away from the main road. They buy folders for their animals despite rich posture in this season. At night, they gather, exchange cordial talks and perform some traditional arts. And now all the way to one of the Berlin Street. A rug tag band of Berlin street artists is taking aim at an urban scourge of neo Nazi graffiti using love and humor to turn swastikas into colorful symbols of inclusiveness. Here is a report. Learning to draw the Nazi symbol, but it's not what it seems. These German students are finding ways of turning swastikas into harmless objects and cartoon characters. I just had the idea of drawing a head around it. Here it's a house, for example, and here it's a billiard ball that's running away. The young Berliners are on a mission to rid their city of hate symbols. Each week, they take to the streets on the lookout for swastikas graffitied onto walls. Then, armed with nothing more than cans of spray paint, they let their imaginations run riot. It's an initiative that was started by shopkeeper Ibo Omari after he saw swastikas appear on the walls of his local park. We'd long wondered how to respond to these hateful messages, and then we said, we'll respond with humor and love. The plan seems to have worked, with fewer swastikas appearing on local walls. But the young Berliners aren't ready to hang up their spray cans just yet. They say they want to keep practicing their art until their city is completely swastika-free. Now for the general weather forecast around the south and cloudy skies will prevail over the coastal areas of the Governorate of the Far and its nearby mountains with chances of intermittent drizzle. Rest of the south and will have clear skies with chances of scattered rainfall over the Hajar Mountains. Winds will be south to south easterly light to moderate. Seas will be slight with a maximum wave height of 1.25 meters.
You're watching this alternate of Oman television. To end this news bulletin, here are the main points once again. Palestinian authorities condemns Israel's plans to build 1,000 new settlement units in West Bank and calls the international community to intervene. United Nations human rights investigators warns of ethnic cleansings in central Congo, documenting the recent killings of more than 250 people. And Dukum Refinery and Petrochemical Industries announces tender for works related to refinery complex and special services. And with that, we do conclude this news bulletin. Thank you for joining us and good night.